In this section, we will discuss the binomial probability distribution. A binomial probability results from a procedure that has, one, a fixed number of trials, Two, the trials must be independent, and three, each trial must have all the outcomes classified in two categories, typically known as a success and a failure. Here's an example of possible binomial distributions. A is binomial, B is not binomial since there are more than two possible outcomes. C is not binomial since senators are selected without replacement and cannot be treated as independent. Here are some notations. Note that a success is not necessarily something good. A success is identifying something we are interested in occurring. An example. This example is, bi is a binomial distribution since each question is independent of the other, as well as two possible outcomes. We are interested in getting a correct answer, so we have P equals one-fourth. We also have Q equals three-quarters which is the complement of P. It also translates to the probability of getting an incorrect answer. So here, we want to know the probability of getting the first two guesses wrong, then the rest correct. Getting the first wrong is 3 out of 4, then getting the next wrong is also 3 out of 4. Getting the next correct is 1 out of 4, the next 1 out of 4 again, then 1 out of 4 again, and the last one is 1 out of 4 as well. Multiplying all this together with a calculator, we get our desired result of 0 0.0020. In reality, we probably would rather look at the general probability of two wrong and four correct by guessing. So let's start by writing all the different ways of getting two wrong and four correct.
Phew. That took a while. So we know there are 15 ways of getting two wrong and four correct. And the probability of each of those is 0 .0020, so we just need to multiply that by 15. We can compact this expression by writing this with exponent notation. Here's the binomial probability formula, which looks weird, but if read carefully, may make a lot of sense. We read this as how many ways we can choose something, like the previous example, choosing two wrong from six questions. Times the probability of our success to the power of how many successes we are interested in. multiplied by the probability of failures to the difference of our total trials and the number of successes we are interested in. Let's revisit the combination formula real quick. This reads 10 choose 7. B is looking for how many ways we can choose 9 from 14. And C is 25, choose 25, which, if you think about it, makes sense to be 1, right? And done.
Now let's use our calculators to do these computations. Press math, then select PRB, and select the NCR option. So for A, we hit 10, then press math and select PRB and hit NCR. Then press 7 and enter. And we get what we knew already. Example B and C, we follow the same procedure as A. Now let's do an example using the binomial probability formula. Revisiting the multiple choice example, where we have six trials, where we want to figure out the probability of two wrong and four right. Treating x as number of correct answers, we will find probability of x equals 4 using the binomial probability formula. So we want to find how many ways we can get 4 correct and 2 wrong. So 6 choose 4. Then we multiply that by the probability of success to the fourth power since we want 4 correct answers. probability of getting a correct answer is 1 out of 4. Then we multiply the failures to the second power since we want two wrong answers. And the probability of a failure is 3 out of 4. Now we can use our calculator to compute all of this. And done. Recall that we did this example already. Now let's try to find the probability that the number of correct answers will be between 0 and 3. This means we just need to find the probability of getting 1 or 2 correct answers. Remember, p equals 1 out of 4, and q equals 3 out of 4. So for 1 correct, we need 6 choose 1 times 1 fourth to the first power times 3 fourths to the fifth power. And for 2 correct, we find 6 choose 2 times 1 fourth to the second power times
times 3 fourths to the fourth power. Then we calculate all of this by hand. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. We enter all of this into our calculator and let it do the work for us. It's important to input everything carefully and correctly, otherwise you may get an incorrect answer. <laughs> 